saves man's best friend? To find out, we are talking today to George Malnati, a board-certified veterinarian and veterinary surgeon. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We were talking as we were a moment ago regarding who saves man's best friend. What is it just dogs that you deal with, or do you deal with dogs and cats as well? No, I operate on both dogs and cats. When a general practitioner veterinarian, which most people go to on a regular basis, when he or she has a problem dealing with bones or joints, usually, something that's beyond what their level of expertise is, or they want a second opinion, they'll give me a call and say, I have a referral for you. Now, I'm surprised to hear that there are such specialists for animals as there are for humans. Obviously, if, if God forbid, my grandmother had a heart problem, I'd never consider taking her to an eye doctor. But I didn't realize that for animals, you also have such specific specialties. Oh, yes. The, the College of Veterinary Surgeons was founded in 1971. It was the first board-certified specialty group. And since that time, there are board-certified specialists in internal medicine, dermatology, neurology, those of us who are board certified specialists have had to go through additional years of training, have had to take an extremely difficult test to establish our level of expertise. You've been called the veterinarian to the veterinarians. <laughs> what makes you so different than the veterinarian that I might drive by on the way to work? Well, that, they generally have a general practice, and that would be for routine things such as vaccinations, routine skin problems, heartworm tests. Um, spaying and neutering, that sort of a problem. Uh, whereas I handle something that is going to be much more specialized. Like uh, a, a veterinarian will commonly do spays. This is their basic surgery, so they do a lot of spays. Now, I operate on knees with the same frequency that your general practitioner would do with spays. So simply I've been trained to a higher level, and then I do a lot of them. So I know what errors can be made not perfect by any means, and so we learn to handle the complications and are aware of where we can go wrong when we're doing something and then know how to handle those if, if a complication does occur. So at what point do I call your office or have my veterinarian, who I normally go to, call your office? Okay, it's usually on your, your veterinarian's recommendation. Uh, if, if your doctor sees that your dog has uh, broken his ACL or obviously you have a broken leg, something like that, then he'll recommend that you go to a surgical specialist. That's when you call me. Uh, I also have neighbors uh, recommend their neighbors to come see me. Say uh, somebody, his uh, dog had a, an orthopedic problem that I worked on. They were happy with the outcome. And then their neighbor happens to mention, well, my dog has uh, such and such a problem. They say, well, why don't you go see George? So you're an extreme specialist of a specialist of a specialist. Then how many of you, how many people are out there who do what you do, let alone do it well. It has to be rare. Yeah, there are about 1,200 board-certified surgeons in the U.S. My goodness. How much of this is dealing with the owners? The more my client understands about what's going on, the better that they can deal with the entire problem. So I go through things such as anesthetic risk. I show them my operating room. I show them my monitoring equipment. I explain to them that any of my patients that are on that table they're being anesthetized, we treat as if it's my child. And we like to be as very, very careful as possible. My practice is small by design so that I can give personal care. My clients actually have my cell phone uh, if there's a problem uh, that they can call if it's after hours. Uh, this is not, that's for that individual problem that they might have if they have a, a broken leg and they have a question over the weekend, I want them to be able to call. What kind of quality of life difference can you make in a dog with hip dysplasia or a dog with an ACL problem or a, a cat that has a knee issue? Well, you, if something is broken, you need to fix it. And, of course, with an ACL, there is an underlying arthritis. So there will be some difficulty later on in life. But it's far, far less than if surgery had not been done. And if you have a bad broken leg, if you put it back together as close to perfect as you can, then the function will be as close to normal as possible. I understand that there was a greyhound that everyone else said should be put down, and you operated on it, and it no longer had to be put down. This animal will get to live the rest of its life happily and healthily. You must be talking about my greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after I started this practice, 
uh, a greyhound came in from the rescue. He was in, in an 11-dog pileup on the racetrack. He had his bones sticking out through the skin, had 104-degree fever. The skin died overlying the, the fracture and in another area. Uh, we, I put a bone plate on it. Uh, fractures will heal in, in the face of infection as long as it's stable. Went through twice daily bandage changes, sterile bandage changes for months. And by the end of about seven or eight months when he was adoptable, he had adopted us. So when you come to my office, you get to meet Dabney, our office manager, the Greyhound. So a veterinarian in Tampa Bay has a client who's bring, bringing their dog to them for years. They've been giving them the heartworm pills. They've been doing the routine problems here and there. Why would they send them to you after putting and in investing years in this relationship with this client and this dog? Well, it's quite simple. I deal as an extension of their practice. They have a situation that they feel that that patient is best served by coming to a board certified surgeon. We handle uh, very, very specific problems that most general practitioners are not equipped to do, are not trained to do. So if they want the best for their client, they send that patient to me. I do whatever I'm supposed to do. And then when that problem is all handled, I send that patient back to the referring veterinarian. Your clients must have the largest hearts of anybody because not only are they pet owners, but they're pet owners that pay enough attention to their animals to know when something is wrong. You must have the most amazing clientele. I do. My, I definitely have the cream of the crop. I'm dealing with clients who really, really do love their pets. Uh, they want to go the extra mile to make sure everything is done to the best of, uh, that they can get done. Uh, and they are out caring about this animal. So decades of being a veterinarian surgical specialist, what is it that really you enjoy the most about this? I like having my clients smile and thank me and tell me how much better their pet's doing. I love getting success stories back from them or I emails with photos and saying, uh, or even some video clips saying, my dog has been running around after knee surgery, is running around like a pup again. I've received letters saying, you've given my dog a new lease on life. Those, that is what I work for and I love to see it. Oh, any office that has a greyhound as an office manager sounds like a great warm place to be. Now tell us, last question for you, how can somebody get in touch with you if they've noticed their animals had issues or if they're a veterinarian who's watching this who really would like to have somebody in the Rolodex to go to in the event that their clients need somebody this good? Well, my practice is at 1969 Sunset Point Road in Clearwater. My telephone number is 727-447-0256. Thank you so much. We've been talking to George Malnati, a board-certified veterinarian and veterinary surgeon.